Welcome to the Going North Podcast, where we will deliver you tips and techniques to advance yourself and anything you decide to do in life. I am your host, Dom Brightman, and every Thursday, I will interview authors, especially self-published ones from various walks of life, who will deliver you information and inspiration to help you charge forward. On a quick side note, be sure to check out my book, Going North, on Amazon.com. It's available on ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Now let's get on with the show. We're going to pause for a quick moment and give a quick shout out to one of the listeners of this podcast. She's got a birthday coming up on April the 1st. The wonderful Tamika Gray. So if you're listening to this podcast, head over to her Instagram account. I am to make a gray. So that is I am to make a gray. I A M T A M E K A G R A Y. And go ahead and wish her a happy birthday. She has a wonderful, wonderful show that's going 10 episodes strong. The Thursday Thoughts of Tamika show live on Instagram and Facebook live. And she's also the creator of Victorious Ones LLC. So go on ahead and stop on by, give her a shout, tell her that the good old Dom sent you, and have a great day. And today on the Going North Podcast, we have, you guessed it, another author, but not just any author. This wonderful guest right here, I met her through Toastmasters International a couple years ago, and I was enchanted by this lady's poise and confidence while she was owning the stage at a speech contest. And she was so young, too. Still is young, too. Let me, let me get that part straight. I, I don't want her to find me and send a missile direct to my house. But anyways, she is really, really phenomenal. She is a professional speaker. And she's also the executive director of her own nonprofit company called Inspirational Hope Incorporated. And she's also the co-host of the Tan Talk Radio Network. She's a mental health therapist and an all-around awesome lady. And you're probably wondering, who am I talking about? I'm talking about the one, the only, Tiffany Dilworth. How are you today, ma'am? I'm doing well, and I love that introduction. I'm going to have to have you come with me from now on when I go on speaking engagement. <laughs> Introduce me. <laughs> Sweet. Woohoo! That was amazing. But yeah, I'm doing wonderful this evening. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great indeed. Still heading north. I love it. Heading north. Well, I just gave a short little uh, glimpse into the wonderful world of Tiffany. Mind filling in the gaps where I may have missed some things? Yeah, no, you hit it right on target. Yes, mental health therapist. I've been doing it for several years now. I specialize in trauma. Actually, I started out as a nursing major, and then I took an intro to psych class, and I fell in love with psychology. And the rest is kind of history with that. And then Inspirational Hope is the nonprofit organization I started. And a lot of people may not realize, but there's there's a lot of people that experience trauma, sexual abuse, d- d- depression, all kinds of mental health concerns. And so at Inspirational Hope, what we try to do is give them concrete tools to help manage those struggles that they might be experiencing. So this year, we are focusing on grief. So for those people that might have experienced divorce, death of a loved one, separation from friends, or even a breakup, what we're doing is we're doing workshops for them in a conference at the end of the year. We have a men's workshop that's coming up in April and then a women's workshop coming up in June. And our first time ever, we are having a support group for teen girls that who have experienced sexual abuse. Because a lot of people may not know, but one in four females experience sexual abuse sometime in their lifetime, unfortunately. And so we definitely saw that being a need in the community, and so we decided to do a support group. And we're actually collaborating with another organization in the community, Tamers Cry. They are an amazing organization, and so we're collaborating together, and we're going to make it happen this year. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about, a lady on the move making things happen for all the captains. And you really did drop some knowledge right there with the women, one in four women going through sexual abuse at least one time in their lives. Uh, 
actually a couple past guests on this podcast actually experience sexual abuse before and it's it's really really disheartening and enlightening at the same time it's like you you really wouldn't expect it especially when folks use like coping mechanisms and they're really good at hiding what's really going on inside and when they let you know about it, it's like wow i did not know and especially what makes it even worse the fact that it's usually a relative sometimes because they're the least likely to do it from an outside perspective but when you think about it 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 kind of makes sense because they're the ones that are closest to you and it's really just really like enlightening the fact that wow this is really happening and it's good that things like that are coming out to light now so we can have folks like you out there help folks to realize hey there's trauma going out in the world there's depression and all that stuff but there we got support groups for you and we can supply you with information to help you know the telltale signs of someone who may be not all there and may try to do some harm to you yeah yeah definitely and it is really eye-opening you're right on target it's eye-opening to find out who the people are who the perpetrators are many times it are it's people that's really close to us and so that's actually where the book comes in at the name of the book that i wrote and published is 11 tools to help manage the aftermath of trauma and it's geared towards individuals that's experienced sexual abuse, even though it can cover quite a few different type of traumas, but the main focus is on sexual abuse. And there's a lot of good information in there. Again, it's 11 tools to help manage the aftermath of trauma. And the reason why I wrote the book really was I was trying to find something for one of my clients that was an easy read for them to read it for themselves to get a better understanding of different techniques. And it was a challenge. I found several books out there with, you know, different tools and techniques people can use to work through depression and anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder, but it was kind of hard to read. I mean, I had all these big words, and I'm like, my client has to go to grad school to understand a lot of this language. (laughs) And so I was like, you know what, let me write my own book. And so it took about three months to write. Ooh. and to go through editing because it's something I do on a daily basis, so it's really easy to write. I mean, I talk to my clients all the time about these tools, and I wrote it out and self-published it on Amazon, and, yeah, it's, it's doing pretty good. It's wonderful being able to go to different groups nationwide and be able to share this book with them, and it's great to hear the stories of how it's impacted them or how they took it to their counseling session and they told a counselor, oh, this is a tool that I want to try to use, and a counselor and them are able to work together to figure out how they can continue progressing in a journey of healing. That's right, folks. So yeah. go out there and buy 11 copies of 11 Tools to Help Manage the Aftermath of Trauma. <laughs> yes, 11 copies and pass it out to family and friends. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Pass them this out faster than weed. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about the gardening weed. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so you mentioned now where you went to school for nursing but ended up learning that getting into people's minds is fun. I mean psychology is fun. So what what trials did you have to overcome in really getting to that point and really sticking with the psychology? Because it can be really tough out there sometimes for some psychology majors because it's so popular. And most folks, sometimes they may not be able to get enough to necessarily keep a roof over their head unless they are got like a master's or a doctorate. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. You know, I, I have to say that God had really blessed me with a really good family who was so supportive and they were just an amazing family or they are an amazing family and because of them a lot of doors actually opened up for me whenever I had gone to college I was able to go to a community college and get a lot of my tuition paid off because my mom worked there so that helped out quite a bit and during that time is actually when I switched majors from nursing to psychology and like you said when you go into psychology in order to treat and make money, you have to at least get a master's degree. And so I was able to get into a good program um, at Oklahoma State University. And after that, I went and got an internship 
and because of who my mom knew, I was able to get a really good internship program, and they ended up hiring me as soon as I graduated from, from college, and after that, with getting your master's degree, in order to become a professional counselor, you have to get certified, and so I went through my tests, went through my hours, I was able to get certified, and one of the biggest challenges that I had was actually moving here to D.C. because I had gotten my license in Oklahoma, and I got a position in D.C., and everything was great and wonderful. So I moved up here, and I was here for about two weeks. I got a phone call informing me that my position was no longer available. Oh. And so I'm like, wait, you couldn't call me two weeks ago before I moved? <laughs> so, <Ouch. laughs> so yeah, that hurt. I was in pain. And so I'm up here in D.C., and I basically had to use up my savings. I had a 401K. I had to use that all up. So I thought I was, you know, was going to have a job. But thankfully, I was able to find out that I could transfer my license from Oklahoma to Maryland. And it took about a three-month process to do that. So for about three months, I wasn't working, and I ended up exploring D.C. So I tried to make the most of it, even though it was a pretty bad situation to be in. You know, I still, yeah, went to free museums (laughs) um, to kind of explore and get accustomed to the culture of Maryland and D.C., and so I would say that was definitely a struggle for me, um, moving here and being away from family. That's definitely a struggle. I'm very family oriented. But, you know, this whole journey has been a growth process for me and I I wouldn't change anything. I would not change anything because it helped me to become who I am today, very motivated and gun ho about life, excited life, you know, excited to see what the future holds in store for me. Oh, yes, I'm excited, too, because you're doing some great things indeed, putting out them events for the world to see and believe and, heck, even feel. I'm pretty sure emotions are involved, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. But like I said, I have a really good family, so, you know, I talk to them every Sunday. I'm glad you survived the three months of travel and exploration. Yeah, I survived, I guess you could say, one day at a time. I and mean, that's, all, that's all I could do. And I'm a firm believer in God, so I definitely believe in Him quite a bit. Like I said, finances, I used up my 401k to, to survive and to eat and to live. But it was a struggle. But again, it was worth it. Because where I am now, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I mean, all the people's lives I see getting impacted by Inspirational Hope, by the book, by the radio show that I'm on. It's it's magnificent to see how people's lives are changed and how I'm being used to help their lives be a little bit better. So I definitely wouldn't change it for anything. There you go. Not even nickels, dimes, quarters, or Benjamins, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's very right. And if I hadn't stayed up here, I wouldn't be able to meet you. So, you know, everything worked out pretty good. Woohoo! Touchdown indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So many inside jokes. All right. So, since uh, you stayed in the DMV area, what would probably be your most valuable experience thus far? Because I know you mentioned that you believe in God, and, and I believe you're a wonderful Christian, right? Um, oh, goodness. I, I hope I'm a wonderful Christian. Wonderful is a subjective word. I do my best. I'll say that. I do my best. There we go. To be a good Christian. Yeah. Woohoo. So it would be probably your most valuable experience with all, well, since coming to the DMV and surviving those three months of basically just making sure you're basically being bare balls for three months. <laughs> <laughs> The most valuable lesson. Wow, that's tough. I would probably have to say um, once I was able to start to get the ball rolling and I was able to surround myself with people who are entrepreneurs, people who were trying to reach their goals in life. Once I got to that place and all these doors started opening up of being able to do this and being able to do that, one of the things I noticed was I had a lot on my plate, more than I could handle. And I remember at one point just being like, I don't I don't know how to handle all this. I mean, I don't have enough hours in the day. And sometimes I wouldn't sleep at night because I had so much on my plate and there's so much I was trying to get done. And I remember when I was in grad school, there was a friend of mine, she was a full-time employee at Oklahoma State University, and she was also working to get her Ph.D., 
And every time I walked into her office, she had this board. And on this board, she had squares on what she was going to do for that day and for that week and for that month. And so I decided to incorporate that into my life, just being overwhelmed with everything. I decided, you know what, I'm going to break things down. And so I broke things down into small steps. And by doing that, life has become so much easier. It really has. Yes, I still have a lot going on. I still have this to do and that to do, this place to go and that place to go. But I don't feel as overwhelmed because I have a strategic game plan. I know these are the things I need to do for the month to reach my yearly goal, then to reach my five-year goal. And so by doing that, that has really helped out a lot, just making a map of what I want to do for the five years, for the year, for the month, and then for the week, and what I want to do today to reach those goals. That's definitely been the most valuable thing that I've learned since moving to the DMV. Sweet. Like what you said there about the strategic game plan and having those blocks out and having that one big goal for the month to reach the yearly goal. So that's really awesome. Yeah, it definitely helped out a lot. That's how come I can be able to do all the things you listed in the amazing introduction you did earlier. It's because, yeah, I, I have to map things out and take baby steps. There you go, baby steps, baby. That's right, baby steps. Sometimes you got to crawl before you walk, and then you got to walk before you run. And then when you see danger, you make a spread for it. <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> Never heard that in part, but that is <laughs> One of these days, I'll be in a rocking chair with gray hair, calling myself a walking book of Proverbs. Who knows? <laughs> That's it. Let me stop. All right. So, what advice would you give to someone who is looking to basically publish their first book to help them reach more people? Because uh, I knew that you published the book. I didn't know that it took only three months. That is very, very impressive. Folks have been sitting on their stories for decades and years, and sometimes they even go away to the grave with it. So what advice would you give to those who mm -hmm. want to get their books out there? One of the first things I would encourage people to do is find that roadblock. Find those roadblocks that are causing you to not publish your book, whether that is distractions, whether that is you feel that you don't have enough time in the day, whether that is you're scared of what people might say about it or you're unsure of it. Whatever that roadblock is, face it head on. That's probably the one of the most important things that you can do is figure out what's causing you not to do it and then face it head on and go for it. Because you sitting on your book, you sitting on your idea or your message isn't helping anybody. It's not it's not helping anyone in the world. I and mean, there's somebody out there that needs your story. I believe that all of us are here for a reason. All of us are here for a purpose. And we have people that we are supposed to reach. And if we're sitting on something that's valuable, then those people aren't going to get what they need. So I definitely encourage to find out what's stopping you and then face it head on. Go ahead and go for that goal. There you go. Avoid them roadblocks. Take the detour. Write things down. Yes. All right. For those out there who may be going through some tough times with depression, because I know you mentioned the sexual abuse earlier, and they, you may have had some clients in the past who may have gone through bouts of depression after going through some sexual abuse, heck, even stuff outside of that. I know every client is different, but if there was, I wouldn't say a cure-all, but something general that has probably yielded the best results. What base advice would you give to those out there who are depressed out there and trying to just get rid of that black cloud that's just hovering over their shoulder? Wow, goodness, that's that's a deep question um, because depression affects, affects everyone differently and the origins of it is different for everyone. But one of the things I guess I would probably say to anyone out there that's struggling is to hold on. Don't don't give up. If, if you feel like giving up Try to reach out to someone for support, whether that's a family member or a friend or there's hotlines you can even call. But just, just don't give up because at the end of the day, things will get better. It's just have to take one day at a time. Yeah, true words spoken indeed. It, yeah, because I've, I've learned firsthand, especially as life goes on, how folks get depressed over things and even heard about recently how one of my colleagues committed suicide from, and he was suffering through depression. It was like, wow, I 
did not know because uh, this guy was really, really awesome. He was happy-go-lucky, confident all the time. He made you laugh, tells good jokes every now and then. But it's just amazing how actually it goes back to what you said earlier, how sometimes folks react to depression differently and there are different triggers for it. Yeah, that's very true. And and that's the thing. Sometimes you can't tell if somebody's feeling depressed. You, you Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes it's obvious, but other times you, you really can't tell. And so I would encourage everyone to always be available and open to listen to someone that might be experiencing depression. And... Um, I'd always be supportive. That's right. So everybody out there is a walking one-person support group, if, even if they're by themselves. Because you never know whose life can change just by offering a listening ear or just saying hi, giving a compliment, heck, even just a random smile. True. That is so true. Yeah. That's very much true. Having a master's, you probably read a bunch of books, especially with publishing your own. Has there been any one book in addition to the Bible that has really stood out and helped you to really keep going and push forth? You know, interestingly enough, um, what actually started me on this path was something I had listened to on YouTube. It was by Earl Nightingale, and it's called The Strangest Secret. And what he talked about, and I encourage everyone to listen to this. Um, I listen to it several times, and each time I listen to it, I get something different from it because I'm in a different stage in life or a different point in my journey. And more more recently when I listened to it, one of the things that stuck out to me was that it's important to always come up with new strategies on a daily basis and recognizing that what we think of, we become what we think about. So if we're thinking about becoming a singer and we practice and we practice, many times that's what we end up doing. If we focus on I'm depressed all the time, I'm depressed all the time, and that's what we end up many times do. If we focus on I'm anxious, I'm anxious, and that's what we end up doing. If we focus on I'm going to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to be an entrepreneur, then that's what we many times end up doing. And that was really impactful to me, listening to that. And that's actually what, yeah, pretty much started me on this whole path of moving out of my comfort zone and venturing out into becoming an entrepreneur and hopefully – um, as mentioned before, being a full-time entrepreneur next year. Woohoo! That is awesome, especially the audio that you recommended, The Strangest Secret. I listened to it myself. It's really good. I even bought the book, but, of course, nice. some some things are better left heard than read sometimes. And funny enough, I'm not sure if you heard of him, Jeffrey Gittimer. He calls himself the sales king because he's out yes. of... Yes. Yep, out of probably like a... Uh, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, yes, I have heard of him. I was agreeing, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, oh, yeah. Out of all the authors under the sales category, he probably has the most books. He's probably the best-selling author, as well as, I guess, Grant Cardona, Tom Peters, but he has a great set of books, like the little gold book of Yes Attitude, the little green book of Getting Your Way, and, of course, the Sales Bible. And then mm-hmm. one of... My coach is Daniel Alley, who has a TED Talk. He mentioned how that audio changed his life immensely and helped him to turn around his addiction, addictions to weed and a bunch of other nonsense, and to be able to propel his life. So that audio is really, really powerful indeed. It's 45 minutes, I believe, on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And, oh, okay. Yep, and it is really awesome. If you can really listen to it every day, that is great. I also like the fact that you mentioned how you can't really stay with the same skills. You have to try to build new skills and strategies almost every day because every day we're a different person, believe it or not. We're we're all aging. We're all getting wisdom. If we decide to get wisdom, sometimes age comes alone. But we're all different than what we are, what we were a year ago in one way or another, and it's really awesome that you stay strong with the personal development. Yeah, definitely. You know, it really is up to us how much we grow and how much wisdom we incorporate in our lives. No one can do it for us. We have to go out and we have to get that information, and we have to apply it to our lives in order to grow. So I definitely definitely like the books that you just shared and definitely appreciate it, and I hope somebody out there gets is able to hear Earl Nightingale and the books that you recommended because at the end of the day, it really is as individuals to figure out what's the best fit for us, whether it's audio books or reading a book and then applying that information to our lives because no one can do it for us. That's right. And if 
for some strange reason they find the technology to be able to shift that to humans, they will become a billionaire. <laughs> 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 you have an incredible mind just for the record <laughs> <laughs> thanks because <laughs> you gotta admit i mean now granted a lazy person might not have a lot of money but at the same time they'll be lazy enough to pay somebody it's like all right like here okay i heard this is a new technology here where it can transfer like action discipline into me so <laughs> I'm going to insert money here. Make me awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and see, that's messing up the process. There's a process to things. You know, and just pushing a button, that's not going to solve it. <laughs> ah, darn it. And the buttons are so shiny, too. Well, coming down the pike here, and this is a question I like to ask almost every guest, if possible. And you're probably below this one, but if you were 25 in 2018, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, wow. Goodness. Okay. That wasn't too long ago. Yeah, three minutes. I'm what, advice I give? <laughs> <laughs> what advice would I give myself 25 years ago? So I would probably say enjoy life. Life is short. It really is. And so I would say enjoy life and take baby steps because when I was 25 years old I was so focused on college and career and I didn't really take time to truly enjoy life so that's what I would definitely recommend enjoy life and take baby steps towards your dreams towards your goals in life I love it love it indeed heck some some might disagree but I agree because it's <laughs> at the end of the day I mean you can only take it one day at a time there's there's probably ways where you can probably 10 extra actions and take a lot of baby steps and make it one big step. But at the end of the day, you you got to take it at your own pace because not everybody can go at the same pace and everybody has their own meanings of success. So enjoy life and make them baby steps to your dream fulfillment. Yeah, that's so true. And I know for me, when I was 25, I was so overwhelmed with trying to do everything at once. But I actually ended up getting stuck. So I just felt overwhelmed. I had a lot on my shoulders, and it weighed me down. And I just I couldn't move because there's just so much stuff on my shoulders. And so that's why, for me, I would give that encouragement of taking baby steps instead of trying to take everything on at once. Slow down and just do what you can do for the day and accept it and keep it going. Because I was very hard on myself. I um, kind of lightened up a little bit. But, yeah, I was pretty hard on myself. I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> I was pretty hard on myself when I was younger, um, <laughs> but but now I, I try to enjoy life and embrace things and embrace my flaws, learn from my mistakes, and, and keep it moving. That's some more advice I'd give myself at 25. Embrace your mistakes and keep it moving. There you go. You should probably make that like an Instagram quote picture. I should. That is a good idea. There you go. Glad you're a little easy on yourself. It's not really good to grab the big old wooden paddle and spank yourself with it. That's not a good idea. It's 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 really bad. Yeah, it's just painful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll end up with splinters and whatnot, and it'll be really, really horrible. And you have to take out all the splinters and whatnot. Yeah, that's not fun. Yeah, not fun on the bun indeed. So for those who want to keep in contact with you and stay updated on your events to help people who are downtrodden to get that hope to rise up again how can we keep in touch with you yeah so there's several different ways definitely like you had mentioned instagram it's so simple everything's tiffany dillworth oh uh, my first and last name so on instagram and twitter it's tiffany t-i-f-f-a-n-i last name dillworth d-i-l-w-o-r-t-h and also my yahoo mail tiffany dot dillworth at yahoo.com so i'm very easy to find <laughs> you really want to find me. And then with Inspirational Hope, the organization, if you're interested in coming to any of our events, the workshops, or the conference, it is at www.inspirationalhope.org. Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. Make sure you go on ahead and find a way to get in touch with the wonderful Tiffany Dilworth. Go ahead and snag some copies of her books and attend the events. She's got she got something for both the ladies and the guys, y'all. It, it ain't just the whole girl empowerment, the whole guy empowerment. She <laughs> she hitting both. I'm, we're trying, we're trying. And thank you, Dominique, for having me on the show today. I really enjoyed it. It was it was great talking with you tonight. 
Woohoo! It was great talking with you too. I enjoy your voice. Thank you. Thanks a bunch for your listening ears on the Going North podcast. I hope you really, really enjoyed that episode. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those who love podcasts and love listening to some inspiration and motivation. And keep a lookout for the sequel to Going North Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself in October 2018. And if you'd like to connect with me directly, feel free to shoot me an email at dombraidman at gmail.com. 